Hi everyone, I'm Damien. And I'm Jeremy. Welcome to our Suburb Data Podcast. We cover everything from property investing to expert busting. If you're new here, we share our personal and professional experiences from 23 years in the game. So you skip the mistakes we made and go straight to property investment success. And today, we're going to be discussing data accuracy and reliability for days on market. So Jeremy, what is days on market? Days on market is the amount of time that a property spends advertised for sale. So what we do is look at the listing portals like realestate.com.au, domain.com.au and we pay attention when a new property is advertised for sale. We keep watching it, keep our eye on it, count how many days it's uh, listed for sale. Once it's eventually sold, uh, we add those days up. Do that for all the properties that sell in a particular market in a particular month and then we've got our days on market. And we've got some slides that we're going to be working through. So we're going to have visual aids so you can watch this in video format on our podcast. But before we jump into it, let's start with an update on suburbdata.com.au. What have we been up to the last couple of months? Yeah, working hard on suburb data and a lot uh, of work. Feels like I've been saying, oh, it'll be ready in another couple of months. Uh, but I reckon it'll be ready in another couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> We're working hard behind the scenes. So we just wanted to give everyone an update on that. And um, yeah, we've got a landing page. So if you are interested, you can always put your, your email down and we can, um, we'll send broadcasts out hopefully in the, the near future. Yeah, so new website, new DSR algorithm. Yeah, fun times. Look a little bit different, but um, yeah, like I said, a lot of our work is going in the background. Yeah, yeah. So the ne- I guess the next thing is we're going to go through a question from a listener. So this was, I think, based on free data versus paid. So thanks, guys. Great content. I use various free and paid data providers, including DSR. One thing I've always been curious about is the source sources of these various providers. Like where does DSR source its data compared to various others? Well, I can't really answer on the behalf of the others there, but I can say that uh, we source our data from Google, Australian Bureau of Statistics, uh, CoreLogic, realestate.com.au, domain.com.au and a couple of others. And we're looking to expand on that, aren't we? Like as we grow, more data, more More data. data. Yeah. And let's go through another question from Mac. So... This is, I think, more to the days on market and where this episode, uh, where we're going to be spending a bit of time in this episode. So Mac asked, I want to confirm if the data for Townsville is accurate or up to date. Days on market is 50 for Kerwin, but other tools show 14 days. So this is a great question because we're looking at one specific metric, but it's different on different sites. Yeah, and there's a significant difference. 50 versus 15, uh, that's from realestate.com.au. And so I do get this question every now and then, how come uh, the numbers differ? And in a more general sense, for all sorts of different metrics, there are lots of different ways in which you can measure it um, and publish it. So there's, for example, uh, one website I know which publishes vacancy rate, uh, rather well known, and it's at the postcode level. And now we publish it at the suburb level. Uh, there are some uh, postcodes in Australia that have over 100 different suburbs. So mm. you could have a radically different vacancy rate for a suburb as opposed to the postcode. Then you might have people publish uh, data, a particular metric, at um, the combination of houses and units. Or it could be split by houses or units. It could be split by bedroom count. Then there's uh, issues about... Um, the uh, days included in the number of observations. So, for example, Mm -hmm. with our auction clearance rates, we actually look at uh, it might be possible that a a week crosses a month boundary and we still include it. Mm. Uh, So it's roughly the month. And then there's um, differences in geographical boundaries. Um, So timing, geography, the means by which a metric is calculated. Um, I think there's one website who... Uh, they eliminate when when they're calculating vacancy rates. They eliminate um, properties that have only been listed uh, for rent for a very short period of time, mm. 
Mm. Uh, I'm not exactly sure on why they do that, but um, for example, we, we include all of them. So in a hot market, you can have a property that's listed for rent and it's snapped up within a week. So we, we include all of those. So there can be varying means of calculating, uh, varying all sorts of measures. And so there's going to be some difference, but I thought I'd address this one because 50 is significantly different from 15. From 15. Well, before we have a look at this example, like why is data accuracy important? Well, uh, it's your read on the nature of supply and demand in a property market. So days on market is generally used to uh, identify a property market in which there is um, high demand mm. relative to supply or is it low demand? So generally if properties come on the market and go pretty quickly, that's a, that's a hot market, that's one in which demand exceeds supply. You can imagine uh, buyers taking their time, missing out, so they're much quicker next time uh, at making an offer and jumping on an opportunity. So we generally see a property market that has high demand, low supply will have a low days on market. We update the data monthly but like other, I guess, um like data platforms, do you know, is their data based on the year medians or is it the averages? Is it normally yeah, 12 well, months? Because that's a, that's here a good it's point. got 12 months, isn't it? Yeah, so realestate.com.au, they measure their days on market over the last 12 months. So we measure our days on market for all the properties that sell in the latest month. Now, we update our data usually by the seventh of each month and for days on market in particular, it is all the transactions from the first to the last day of that month. And that's the reason why there would be that difference in data, correct? Well, it still doesn't explain it because I don't believe there has been a month in the last 12 months where this suburb has had uh, a days on market as low as 15 days. So this case is a difference in calculation. So what I did in order to answer... Uh, Max question is I went and had a look at all the properties that sold now by the way Mac contacted me in February so I had a look at all the sales in January this is 2024 2024 because the data that he's looking at that 50 that is for the month of January okay so I looked at all the properties that sold in January actually it's I didn't even screen. look at all of them I just grabbed a sample so what this table shows is the address of the property uh, when we first saw it, as in when, when it was first advertised, and when we uh, last saw it, meaning it was removed from the for sale pages. Uh, and this is from realestate.com.au who's saying that it's 15 days. Now if you have a look on the far right, you will see a column named DOM. That just, is sorry, just for our listeners, there's 16 property addresses that we're showing. So 16 property addresses and we've got the initial date, is that correct? And then the last seen date on realestate.com. So when it was advertised, when it's off the page, how long has that taken? Days on market. Yeah, on that's, the end. that's the days on market. Now this is not the full list. This is just a sample of 16 but it's it's a significant sample. Is it, I think it's more than half. Is it the last 16 or the last 16 sales potentially? Or it's you just, just randomly? a sample of 16, okay. yeah. And you can see there that, well, they're ordered from highest days on market at the top mm -hmm. to lowest days on market. Now, there's the three fastest selling properties are at the bottom. One took 15 days and the other two took nine days. The rest of them were all over 15 days and some of them go up to 216 days. So how can you say with this sample, how can you say that the days on market is only 15 days? Now, what I suspect is going on here is realestate.com.au and others, they may consider a market, that, a, a sub, a property, sorry, a property that goes under contract they could remove that from the list. They could stop the clock. Uh, whereas there are circumstances when the finance falls through. Um, you know, the buyer who signed the contract has a cooling off period and during that cooling off period they cool off. They get a building and pest inspection report, they don't like it, they're out. Uh, they get a valuation done, it's too low, they're out. So the property's back on the market. So we don't stop the clock until it's gone, until that contract becomes 
unconditional mm. and the real estate agent therefore removes it from the for sale pages. It's, it's effectively sold. So it is possible but I still don't see, even after considering that, How it's 15 uh, it's, days. Yeah, it's going to be 15 days when you look at this sample. But who pays realestate.com.au? How do they make all their money? Mm. It's agents. So agents are their bread and butter. They must look after agents. Now, can you imagine an agent seeing 216 days or even 100 days? That's going to make the market look pretty tardy. That makes it more difficult for the agent perhaps to sell the property. So I'm wondering if there's some unique rule that REA Group apply to their calculation of days on market because I cannot see how it can possibly get as low as 15 days. How would we find out? Well, this this way. You, you just keep monitoring the website, see when a property becomes available, mm. see when it disappears. Take a lot of time and a, a healthy spreadsheet, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it would. Yeah, you've got to be on it every day. Uh, but, yeah, that's that's what we do. And uh, so this, this is a, a massive difference and you can imagine a, a property investor getting this data. Now, by the way, this is free data, so this is an example. Mm. Um, no data is for free. It will always cost you and the most expensive data is the free data because of what it will cost you. It just seems like a headache that you're looking at different sources and you've got different days on market mm. number and the effort that you have to go to to try and find out what's the correct days on market yeah and this is a relatively easy one to check there are some that are quite difficult because ideally you want to go into markets where days on market is lower or trending lower potentially wouldn't you as an Mm. investor but that's only one metric that you're really looking at before investing yeah that's right and the other thing of course is uh, how do you combine all this data so you can go to all these free data sources Mm. and even if you assume that their data is accurate how do you put it all together into something that uh, that makes sense? Closing thoughts? Uh, yeah, I think I'd like to just reiterate what I said about um, data will always cost you mm. and the most expensive data is the free data. Where can listeners go? Yeah, cool. so if you think someone else needs to know about this, uh, might benefit from this, there's a share link. Uh, and please let us know if this is something you like, click the like button, put in a comment. Um, And if you're eager to consume more, um, subscribe. That's right. Subscribe, like, share to the world, everyone. And thanks for tuning in and see you in our next episode. Bye for now and take care.